Hello there, I'm Garnu and I just released my debut album called Happy Kid. It has 30 songs on it and today we're going to go track by track and I'm going to give you some insights about what's going on. Let's get rolling! Alright, so Scale is in the closet. This is a song that's very near and dear to my heart and that's because it's featuring my girlfriend Anna Vixi who helped me write, yes, she's right there behind the camera recording this stuff, and uh, she helped me write this song. We were playing one evening with a mess on my table and recording various things and whatever we found, glasses, coins, anything that we could make a sound, percussive or otherwise, and that's how the beat came to be. And later, uh, she agreed to do a verse on the song as well and that's amazing because it's also her musical debut and I wanted, I really really wanted this song to be the first on the album because she has been like an anchor to me. She was my greatest supporter and uh, my biggest fan, or at least that's what she says, <laughs> throughout this whole process and uh, pretty much this album wouldn't, uh, wouldn't have happened if it wasn't for her. And uh, that's why it starts the way it does. What you'd call one of my main uh, characteristics, I guess, is that I cannot possibly stick to a single genre of music. And this will be very... I wanted this to be very, very apparent over the first uh, few songs on the album to let you know that this is not going to be your run-of-the-mill uh, standard, I don't know, rock or pop or hip-hop thing. Is going to be all over the place, and I wanted to be—I wanted that to be as clear as possible right from the get-go. So this second track is a uh, balls to the wall, high energy, heavy banger of a thing, and uh, I felt like the chorus the, with the line "I just want to be different" was like a perfect model for this album. Losing someone else's fight is the first introduction to this beautiful instrument called the buzuki on the album and uh, you're gonna hear this throughout the whole thing because I love it, I, I just love it so much. Like this thing, I got it early last year. A bit out of tune. But you get the gist, it has this beautiful sound, this beautiful chorusy sound, all the strings are doubled and stuff. And I wanted to make a song that sounds like something like... If the... <laughs> I mean, if, if the Witcher was fighting monsters but in the 21st centuries and there's also like monster trucks and stuff like that. <laughs> Nobody is... Um, I guess it's sort of a love love-hate song, it's about a relationship that, uh, I mean, I guess a lot of people go through this, a lot of relationships go through this, I don't want to generalize anything, but uh, if you haven't experienced it, at least you've probably heard about it, it's that point in a relationship when uh, the couple, they blame each other for everything that's going wrong and they forget to look at themselves. And this is like, it's, it's a very toxic part of a relationship. Sometimes you manage to get over it and it's great, other times it uh, breaks the whole thing down. And uh, this song is a representation of that, but in the thick of it, when it's actually the worst. But it also has a glimmer of hope in it. I always like, even in the saddest and most bleak songs, I like to put a little, gl a little glimpse, a little small piece of hope in there, because, I mean, I believe that things can always get better. This one is inspired by a lot of movie and video game soundtracks. I listen to a lot of that stuff and I really, really dig it. And when I wrote this song, I had in mind this like fantasy forest jungle thing where there's an air of the mysterious and uh, I guess you could say the occult forces at work in that space. And uh, I really wanted to capture the awe and the tension 
of being in such an environment. Stranger in the Mirror is a song about the loss of innocence and how the world hardens and toughens your skin to the point where, if you let it, you can sometimes no longer recognize yourself. And uh, I really wanted to portray that because it's, uh, it's something that I've been through in the past, uh, past 10 years. It, it, it has happened quite a bit to me. And uh, I felt the need to get that out of my chest. And thankfully, on this song, uh, we have a, I have a great, great uh, guest musician. Her name is Sofia. And uh, she's actually the first person who agreed to play as a guest musician on my album. And I'm forever grateful to her for that. And she did an absolutely amazing job. She absolutely stole the show. So, uh, yeah. That's Stranger in the Mirror for you. This is like how people are stealing the show now in the back. <laughs> You and Me is another track uh, featuring this wonderful instrument and this one I was playing around, I wanted to make something that sounds more like a prog rock thing and I was really playing around with uh, more what you call fancy chords and stuff like that. If I remember correctly, I think I wrote this one while uh, on tour with another band and we were playing at the seaside and yeah right in front of our uh, of our guest house I was sat there and uh, it was like this really nice really beautiful sunset and I felt inspired and I was moving around on the bazooki and uh, came up with this riff Broken Family is about that awful feeling that nobody cares, nobody wants to know what you're going through, nobody wants to listen to you. It's like a cry for help, really. And uh, this is one of the songs where I felt like uh, a different voice could really bring out the plus. So uh, I talked to Cerberus and he's an amazing lyric writer and uh, he really managed to portray this feeling from a different point of view than I did and I think it came out really cool. I've been fascinated by the myth of the devil at the crossroads for a really really long time and I've always wanted to make a song about this and uh, this one is like a, a, a bit of a different take. Instead of meeting the devil at the crossroads and making a deal with him the devil here is like a uh, travel companion, like a hitchhiker that you uh, that gets in your car somewhere along the journey and starts pestering you to play his games. And, uh, it's like this really hard-hitting, punchy, bluesy, but down-tempo song, and uh, I felt that what the song was missing was an amazing solo. So I, uh, I spoke with André Piper and uh, he came out with this... Like, when I heard it, when I heard his solo, it literally blew my mind. It was like so much feeling, so much. The melody was absolutely great. And I think he really brought this whole thing together. Ah, the travel song. So this I wrote while I was doing uh, gear reviews and demos on my YouTube channel and I wrote this for one of those demos and uh, usually I leave those just as they are but this one for whatever reason it kind of stuck. I kept using it and listening to it over and over again. Uh, Anna also uh, told me a bunch of times that she really enjoys it, so I decided it should, uh, it would be like a good uh, instrumental section on the album. Also, you had a comment on a video about this song, I think. I did? I think someone was asking for the song. Oh, that's nice. Well, if you were asking for the song, here it is. Track number 10 on the Happy Kid album. Check it out. <laughs> Karen is a bit of a sad song for me personally. I, uh, 
I experienced a lot of uh, death around me and my family in the past few years and this song is mostly about that. If you've ever lost a loved one, uh, then uh, I hope uh, I hope this song can help uh, bring you some joy, <laughs> or really for I don't know, I don't know. It's uh, it's like a, it's a tough subject for me right now. Moving on. Closure. Closure. Yeah, I guess closure. That would be the word. Yeah. We're getting back into the heavy side of things. So hell on earth, if you like trap, if you like metal, if you like all that jazz, hip hop and stuff, this one's for you. <laughs> it's a song about the, the underdog mentality, it's a song about hustling, it's a song about uh, making it or trying to make it work in a tough environment. And it's also obviously like the name states, Hell on Earth is about the hell we raise while trying to do so. Heavily, heavily inspired by my cyberpunk playthroughs. I've been playing a lot of that in the past two years, since they fixed it, obviously. Uh, and uh, I wanted, I wanted to build this song like a crescendo. I wanted to start small and then slowly build and build and build the tension until it finally goes boom in your face this is how we trade our life away bodies in the streets while corpos with their banks cha -ching. <laughs> secret garden is a little bit of an interesting one uh, I used to do a few years back, and I guess I still do from time to time, but I used to do a lot of uh, video game soundtracks, uh, a lot of work like that, and much of it is like NDAs and stuff, and you make the song, you get paid, but then they take your song away, you don't get any credit for it, nothing. And while I was working on one of those fantasy games, I, um, I came up with this song, and I enjoyed it so much <laughs> that I refused to give it to them. I, I tried uh, talking them into giving me credit and stuff and letting me use it, but they wouldn't have it. Whatever contracts are contracts. So I decided not to give them the song. I wrote them another one. It's all good. We're fine on that front. But this one I've kept and I've kept it for a long time. Uh, after I met Anna, and uh, she she was actually back in university then, and she had her uh, like thesis. thesis, or how do you call it, the final bachelor degree? I think. Bachelor degree is it a bachelor degree or is that for high school? I don't know. Anyway, she had the final thing. She had to do a big project in order to uh, complete the university. It was like she had this character called Mr. Pumpkin and the little girl that they would go on adventures together, it was, it was really cool. And uh, I showed her this song, she really liked it, I think so, <laughs> at least. <laughs> and she asked me if she could use it as a background music, as a soundtrack for her booth when she did the presentation and stuff. So I worked on the song again after a couple of years, since the initial video game thing. I worked on it, polished it, gave it to her to use it, and then another five years later, it finally found its way to this album. And I think it's it's, it's a nice middle point. <laughs> I'm sorry, Tofu is having fun <laughs> over there. Uh, what was I trying to say? It's a nice middle point for the, for the album. It's like uh, a little bit of calm before the storm picks up again. Something Right, Something Right is a song about uh, home. It's about whenever you're feeling lost, you should always remember that fighting for your home, fighting for what you love, that's, that's, where, that's where your mind and heart should be. That should be your North Star, your compass, your anchor. Always fight for what you love. And home, home is where the heart is. 
That was very deep. <laughs> Next, when I'm gone. This one, uh, this one is another special one, close to my heart subject. Uh, you know, all those artists that uh, unfortunately die way too young, and uh, we only get to appreciate their art post mortem, or how do you say it in English? Anyway, we only get to truly appreciate what they what they've made after they're no longer with us, and I think that's such such a sad thing. And uh, like this song, it's like trying. What I try to say with this song is, if you have an artist that you enjoy their work, let them know. It makes a it makes a world of difference if you do that. And um, on that note, we have an amazing guest musician on this song as well. His name is Emir, and uh, he's one of the coolest rappers I've ever met in my life. He has such a nice voice, he's such a good lyric writer, he has a, an amazing flow, and I'm so grateful that he. Uh, he accepted to, he wanted to play on this song, and I think it turned out absolutely killer. It's also uh, one of the few songs on the album where I actually played the guitar solo. <laughs> I'm, I'm not the biggest, uh, I'm not the most, uh, not the biggest virtuoso, you could say. I'm more like a composer, like I work with the big picture all the big stuff, the chords, the melodies, the stuff like that. Solos are not really a cup, my cup of tea, but I'm trying to and uh, I think this one came out all right. Fireplace! Now this one, this, this, is, a, this is a nice one. Uh, Anna tells me, I'm not exactly sure, I can't for the life of me remember, <laughs> but Anna tells me that I actually wrote it, we have this like fire pit. Uh, close to our studio outside we'd sometimes light the fire and hang out and I play the guitar and we talk and stuff and this song is obviously inspired by that but uh, she said that I actually wrote it while we were at the fire which is even cooler <laughs> now that I think about it so yeah this one was written about the fireplace and about all the conversations that we have going on there and that, all that cool vibe I really wanted to capture it but also there's another twist here because uh, for the lyrics I actually use the tarot deck and uh, I have I have the cards right here so we have the the tower uh, we have death uh, death sorry <laughs> and uh, the magician those were the three main cards and I think I also got uh, the two of swords and the four of uh, clubs and I did a tarot reading and that's how the, the lyrics the lyrics came to be one day I was noodling on the guitar, playing around with all sorts of weird scales and stuff and uh, while I was toying with this, uh, I think it's called the Gypsy Scale, I came up with this very playful melody and that's how Twerky Brain uh, initially was born. And after listening to that guitar a couple of times, I, uh, I came up with the idea of writing a song about the state of our society right now, but from the point of view of how social media dictates our lives and how we're constantly scrolling like zombies and we have short attention spans and all that fun stuff. <laughs> so yeah, this is a song about uh, short attention spans. And doom scrolling. And doom scrolling. <laughs> Your brain starts twerking and you can no longer uh, pay attention to anything. Your mind starts flying all over the place. 
Rounding go is about those pesky vultures that uh, circle above your head and they cannot wait for you to make it, to take a misstep, to make a mistake, to make anything so they can swoop down and take everything away from you. You know what I mean? Those uh, pesky vultures? Yeah, they're everywhere. Those. It's about that. We Are Not The Same is one of those uh, late night tracks late night songs that, I mean I often it often happens to me that I stay up until 3 or 4 or 5 a.m. because an idea pops into my head and I just have to sit there at the computer until I get it up and uh, this is one of those this is definitely one of those Demons in the Church now this this is an interesting one it's another track featuring Sofia and she did this amazing like uh, Amazonish, very powerful lead vocal melody, scream stuff. You just gotta listen to it, it's amazing. But that's not all. So the song was born when uh, me and Anna went on a two or three day trip to a city called Sigishara here in Romania. And uh, that city basically has a big castle, citadel, right in the middle of it. And we were staying in that citadel, sleeping in, sleeping in there and roaming the streets and trying to imagine how they live life over there. So we found all those, these amazing places. And that's also right after she got me my, it was right after my birthday and she got me this, uh, this instrument as a present. We took this little guy with us, and I uh, was. Uh, I was strumming it, and I had my uh, portable recorder with me, and we recorded like a big, big, big chunk of that. This song was recorded in that castle in the different spots in the cemetery, in the church, up. Top, which also they were really nice at that church over there because they let us sample their they had these big bells and I they let me hit them and record that and they let me sample they had this huge reverb stuff and uh, I actually recorded some vocals in there for this song and we, we named it uh, we named it demons in the church because we thought it fitting and appropriate <laughs> We were the demons. We were the demons. And we in were the in the church. <laughs> <laughs> These days we are bombarded with information overload from all the directions. And I don't know about you, but me personally, I'm having a really harder and harder time actually uh, distinguishing between what is true what is fake and uh, what's twisted and i think that's th that really worries me that really worries me so that's where the inspiration for where is the truth came from well, that's for the main idea now the fun part is we got another badass guest in here she's uh She's called Nayad Eve and uh, she came and gave the song this whole vibe and atmosphere. It's brilliant. It's absolutely brilliant. And the fun thing is, before I asked her to play on this song, I had actually met her a few months earlier working on a different project. and. Uh, she told me back then that she would love to learn how to scream, how to do growling vocals, like the death metal stuff. And I remember that, when I mean, she came to record this song, I asked her if she still wanted to learn that. And uh, thankfully she said yes, and all the screams that you hear at the end of the song on the deathcore part, on the breakdown thingy, that's all her. Nothing else. I did not record anything on that part, vocal-wise, it's all her, she learned to do that in 10 minutes, 
it's amazing, it blew my mind. I Like It Loud is pretty self-explanatory. It's just, it's simply that. I like it loud. So I invited another couple of people who are really great at doing loud stuff. On the first hand we have Lau, who's a badass hard rock vocalist. He has an amazing voice. He wrote the lyrics together in the studio. He knocked it out of the park in like, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes. And then for the guitar solo, I called Tony Dishmarescu, who played like an absolute beast. Bulldog! <laughs> I guess that would be the best description. <laughs> it's angry, it's got attitude, it's got everything you want. I like it loud. And you like it as well. Marching for Paradise is another one of those recurring themes on the album about uh, trying to do things the right way, trying to do things the way you think they're right trying to improve, trying to make everything better and you feel like you're marching on your own and I really wanted to that feeling, if you know what I mean <laughs> this is one of the more uh, introspective songs I guess and uh, I'm quite uh, hesitant to actually talk too much about it because I feel like I feel like it would be to the detriment of the song so uh, yeah we're just going to move on from this one <laughs> reality I actually wrote uh, fairly soon after I discovered this this cool hip hopper this cool rapper called NF and he had this mixtape that was very cinematic it was like Hans Zimmer it was like Eminem rapping over Hans Zimmer uh, music and I wanted to do that for myself, I mean that's so badass, so I'm sorry NF, I kind of ripped you off on this one, but I had to. So there's that, and the subject matter, I mean, I consider myself to be a spiritual guy and I have absolutely no problem with any sort of religion. From my point of view, everyone should believe in whatever they want to believe in. My only problem is with the people that use religion to justify questionable actions. So, uh, I think we all know some of those people. So that's what reality is. Another song about the loss of innocence. Like I've said, a recurring theme on this album. It's called Happy Kid, and uh, yeah, this was, it's one of the main subject matters. Waste Away is about the connection with your inner child, with that uh, creative spark that we so often tend to bury deep down inside, and some people lose it forever. And, uh, I, I think that's sad. And we should uh, we should more often maybe try to reconnect with that side of ourselves. This is another one uh, one of the songs featuring uh, Naya B, and uh, I think she did a beautiful beautiful job portraying portraying this feeling. Neurodivergent. Now this I had uh, I had the. Uh, intro guitar part laying around for for a bunch of years and I didn't exactly know what to do with that this, this nostalgic feeling I always I, I really enjoy this nostalgic melancholic type type of uh, sounds so I tend to create this fairly often <clears throat> so I had this guitar part laying around and when I started to build the song I uh, I thought adding the buzuki would be a nice touch and then also because uh, I'm a sucker for orchestra and soundtracks and stuff I had this, this big powerful full blown orchestra with the brass and the whole string sections and the big drums and stuff totally over the top <laughs> and 
kind of out of nowhere, but I do enjoy adding surprises to songs. And I had this song laying there, and I thought, hmm, it's missing something. It's missing, it's missing, it's missing something. And I gotta give kudos again to Anna for this idea, because she asked me, why don't you call your brother? And I said, that is such a great idea, because I love the way my brother writes music and plays the guitar. He's like my favorite guitarist in the whole wide world. The whole wide world. And I'm sorry to all the other guitarists I've called to play on my album. I love you all, you're amazing. But my brother is my brother. And uh, it's always such a treat to have him play on one of my songs. And I'm, I'm grateful that we made this song together. I think it turned out, it turned out rock and roll. In Dust We Trust, one of the heaviest songs on the album, with another guest musician who did this super flashy and over-the-top and brilliant solo. His name is Vlad Joldish. And um, yeah, In Dust We Trust... Uh, let me see... The, the lyrics... Like this the thing that In Dust We Trust this is a thing that came up at the studio during many, many jam sessions. It was like we were talking about how like, the dust is pretty much the only thing you can take for granted in this world. It will show up no matter what, everywhere, regardless of if you want it or not. It's the only thing you can count on, you can count on to show up every single time. So yeah, in dust we trust. Whew, we finally made it! The final song, it's called A Better Place, and this is like... This song is supposed to tie the whole album together. It's the whole idea of it, the whole concept is if you could have a conversation with your younger self, with the kid, would that kid be happy or sad? Would he be proud of you? Would he like your style? Would he be excited to do all the things that you did? Or would he like be bummed out? And that's a question that has been really plaguing me <laughs> for the past, I don't know, 15 years. And I finally made this song and it's like a letter to my younger self. And I felt like it would be the perfect ending to this chapter. Okay, so that's it. 30 songs, we went through all of them. Thank you very much for sticking around if you're still here. You're a legend. And also, if you haven't checked out Happy Kid yet, I would be more than thrilled to, if you could give it a listen. It's out on all the major big platforms like Spotify, iTunes, Deezer, Tidal, Amazon, whatever you like to listen to music on. And uh, if you could uh, give me some thoughts, let me know if you like it or not, share it with your friends, that would mean the world to me. Thank you very much for watching and have an amazing day. Rock and roll! Congrats! Don't you ask? Thank you. That was... That was something. <laughs> Whew! What? Now. I'm gonna go now. Any second now. Almost.